they cannot live with this person. Many divorces happen just after having kids. Okay. Okay. Yes. Women understand this earlier than men, especially after children enter their lives. So okay. Venus is all about this part. Venus is water, only water. Uh -huh. Water is not enough to keep people together. You need Jupiter, the vacuum. Okay. Let's do some more Venus, reading Venus. The past is the ninth house from Venus. The future is the fifth house from Venus. So now we're treating Venus as Lagna. I told you, we're doing this. Venus is Lagna. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The past is ninth, future is fifth from Venus. Okay? Like you may have seen them from Lagna earlier to see past and future and whatnot. Let's say past life from ninth from Lagna, right? Fifth okay. house is future life. Okay, next slide. Now, the, from Venus, this is before a relationship and after a relationship. <laughs> oh, okay. So the ninth from Venus has to support you entering a relationship. Oh. Now, it, do, it doesn't say here, but I'm going to explain something more about this. The nine, the, this Venus particularly also is supposed to be responsible for semen, the seed. All right? Okay. All right? Now, uh, where does the seed come from? It always comes from father, right? Mm -hmm. If you, mm -hmm. No matter your gender, your seed is coming from your father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we read the ninth house from Venus, it actually implies that you are reading what is the contribution that your father has given you? Okay. This is very deep. We are speaking about some deep, deep aspects of sexuality here that are, have arisen because of your father's attitude when you were being conceived. Okay. This can also explain some issues that people have in sexuality. All right? Okay. Yes. Uh, it doesn't tell us the person's gender preference. It does not. Don't try to do that. Some people will read, hear this and say, can I read gender preference, like homosexuality, bisexuality, and whatnot, or, homo, or, or hetero, or whatever, from Nine from Venus. It won't work. That's, that's not what we're reading here. Uh, okay. We say that three months before a person is conceived, the soul mm -hmm. of the person has entered the father. Oh, okay. And nine months after that, they're in, inside the mother's womb. So huh? a total of 12 months, right? Oh, okay. Perfectly fitting, 12 months. Perfect. Those three months, the father's behavior, nature, attitude is deciding the soul which is entering. Okay. Did, he, did the father really decide? No, not really. Shiva and Shakti have decided already. Okay. 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 But when you read that line from Venus, you can understand some. What was it that you were told? What was it that you were taught about relationships? What is the attitude they had when conceiving you? What is the attitude they showed you after you were born about sexuality? And this can okay. deeply impact a person. All right. Okay, so you're saying if ninth house from Venus has a planet that will impact Venus that way. Even the Lord of that sign will impact. Everybody has some type of view of sexuality. This is coming because of what you were taught. Hopefully, you will start imbibing your own principles with time. But until then, the ninth from Venus is designing this. Okay? Okay. If there are too many malefics over there, then if you see setbacks in life, this can deeply impact your attitude towards sexuality as well. Okay. Like if there are malefics in ninth from Venus, something happened. In your past, it could okay. be a broken relationship. It could be a very unhealthy event in matters of physical intimacy. Could be. That I cannot see just from Nine from Venus. What it okay. is, I have to see from Lagna. But that it is not, what, if there is a malefic in Nine from Venus, I know there is something subconsciously in the person's mind which is affecting okay. their view of every partner they meet in the future. Because okay. the Nine from Venus makes you start measuring is this person like this or is this person like that? Is it, okay. it, how close are they to being that same person that I had an initial relationship with or physical intimacy? Uh, and then if you see something you like, you take it. If you see something you don't like, you throw it away. So that gives kind of a vision to Venus. Yes. It is actually trying to restrict Venus's view about what is good or bad in relationships. 
Ah, okay. And yeah. if there are benefits, then you take this in a good way, I guess. All prob all planets are problems, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's say Mercury is there in nine from Venus. Oh, does he have as much money as my previous boyfriend? Oh. Okay. Sun, does this person have a certain command and respect in his community? Or she in their community? Okay. Okay. Do they give me enough attention? Surya. Surya is all about attention. Ah, uh, perfect. Yes. Mars. How strong are they? How independent are they? Ninth and from uh, Mars and ninth from Venus. Okay. Okay. Yes. But this can go both ways. Also, this can go both ways because it could be that let's say some terrible combination. Saturn with a node is there ninth from Venus. That's really terrible. All right. Maybe the person has seen some abuse. Mm -hmm. In okay. Now, not everybody who sees abuse will have an issue in ninth from Venus. Okay. Only uh -huh, those yes. abuse and it becomes a part of where, how they measure relationships in the future. Okay. So, some so somebody lucky. has they some abuse indicated by nine from Venus. Okay. But if they do, then every relationship after that is measured based on that abuse. Oh, uh, well, he should not abuse me. She should not abuse me the way. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> some people do the exact opposite. Okay. <laughs> Unknowingly, because of the abuse they have suffered, uh. they look for a partner who will give security under which they can experience the tribulations of that again. That's why you have people who enter into all sorts of uh, peculiar aspects of sexuality, such as uh, bondage, all right? Oh. Or um, what's the word? Um, uh, violence also, you know? Things like that. There are these peculiar things that occur. And that is because there's a filter on the ninth from Venus. It's a filter. Okay. Okay. If there are too many malefics in ninth from Venus, it's very difficult to marry. Oh. Okay. Fifth house, malefics are deciding how long you will stay married. Fifth Future. from Venus. Yes. Future oh. of relationships. Okay. Yes. Now, here's another statement. In addition, the twelfth shows that which instigates marriage. So this is twelfth from Venus. Oh. Twelfth from Venus brings the affection, but twelfth from Lagna is when we decide to enter a relationship. So God may have given you the Dasha in twelfth from Venus, and you yeah. may be thinking, oh, there's a partner. All right? But until okay. twelfth from Lagna arises, you don't fall in love. Okay. So the brain has to finally accept, right? Lagna? Oh. Ha ha ha. Okay. You no, know, yes. God may have given you something, now God is waiting. When are you going to wake up and see what I've given you? <laughs> oh, okay. So when the Lagna says, Oh, look, there is something, then they react. Yes. This is part okay. of timing events. Okay. You cannot receive anything until God has given you. So the Karaka must give you first. There are nine Karakas, Grahas, that can give you. So when they have given you, after they have given you, then God is waiting for you to respond. Your response is from the Lagna. Okay. Yes. Similarly, the second house decides the length of the relationship. Now, here's a slight difference. See, the second and fifth are very similar. They're very, mm -hmm. very similar. But mm -hmm. second is like a sustainer. All right. It is the actual sustainer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fifth is your future promise. Like, do you have a vision of what can be done in this relationship? Is there a vision for where this can go? All right. Okay. In, in, in truth, you just have to examine both. In the end, you just examine both. Truth be told. Okay. All right. Correct. But second is the one who is really sustaining the relationship as far as your physical proximity is concerned. Okay. The fifth is sustaining it as far as your personal vision is concerned. Okay. All right. Correct. Got it. Yes. Now, so this now based on this second house i gave up i decided let me add a few things i said all right mm -hmm. um the simile the second decides the length of the relationship so how is this done second house from venus decides the marriage strength okay second house from the seventh house decides the actual length of marriage you can see the planet over there and you will know how long the marriage lasts for example okay. maybe the person has Pisces ascendant right uh -huh. 
Huh? Um, then Libra is the eighth house, right? Correct. Assume there are no planets. Venus could decide the length of marriage. So minimum 20 years. Venus is 20 years. So minimum 20 years. Okay. Achha. All right. What if Venus was afflicted? Maybe half of that, 10 years. Okay. Okay. So and like that. A, do you take this like this, that if there is a malefic in the eighth, then the marriage length could be short or it benefits then, or you just no, take let's the... Let's say person. if Mars was in eighth house in Libra. Okay. Let's say no other planets are there except Mars. Then Mars gives minimum seven years. He becomes responsible for giving that length of time. But if that same Mars who was responsible for the length of time, let's say was afflicted by Rahu, okay, okay. one drishti of Rahu, that, he, that is Kujastambana, then he definitely has become one third, let's say. So we have these ways to differentiate between half and one third. Or, okay. or let's say an exalted planet, three times the length, three uh -huh. times longer. Mars exalted in Capricorn in, seven, in eighth house. The person will be married for 21 years minimum. Minimum. Okay. 20. Okay. That's if we're assuming they will divorce, then it's minimum 20 years. But if we, assume, if we, if we know that they're not going to divorce, then, then it doesn't matter anyway. Then you don't have to count, right? Okay. So if there are planets, you take the dasa length of that planet. And if there's no planet, you take the Lord. Correct. Fantastic. So simple, right? There are a few quirks to this. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Always is. Because it sounds too simple, right? There are a few quirks. <laughs> to this. But, but that's the idea. Okay. Second from Lagna decides the family support for marriage. Second from Lagna. Okay. Why am I mentioning this? We started with seventh house, right? Now we're doing. Now I said something about twelfth house. Now a second mm -hmm. house has come up. These three houses are the ones from which Venus develops all relationships, because they are the yeah. natural exaltation, multricorner, and own sign of Venus. Yes, two seven eleven. Twelfth house is the one which brings the relationship. Yes. Seventh house yeah. is the one where you're in the relationship. Second house is where this relationship becomes part of the family. Okay. This works from Lagna very well. It also works from Venus. But, the, but here, it, you are not Venus. You, Venus is God in relationship. Okay. okay. So basically, if somebody has a malefic in the second house, then that can create difficulty in mixing with the family or the in-laws. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Like some people, they say they've been married for a long time, but they have a, have a terrible relation with the family of the person. Then there's oh. the. That's because second house is gotra. Oh, okay. So for a man, we say the man's gotra doesn't change. They are fixed. Oh. They are rigid. They cannot move. All right. They are fixed. Okay. Stira. Okay. Completely stira. So their gotra doesn't change. They marry. They don't marry. It doesn't matter. Gotra is not changing. Women are flexible. They are not rigid. All right. They okay. are chara by nature. They, they say Shakti is highly movable. Shakti can enter any gotra and restart that gotra. Okay. Oh. So that is why we say that women, the, the female gender is extremely powerful because oh. without them, no gotra can survive. No tradition can survive. The rishi's knowledge cannot survive without the Shakti. All right. The, yeah. And in this one, but, but because it is so changeable, Okay. There's a risk that you cannot keep it. Oh. You cannot keep her. So you have oh. to be very careful. Now, her second house is going to be the gotra she will marry in. Okay. okay. She has her own gotra until she marries. Then she gets the gotra of the spouse, the husband rather. Okay. All right? So because she this... has the ability to, to, to continue the line. Okay. So therefore... All marriage matching is surrounding only women to make oh. sure they are happiest. If you read marriage matching, especially Prashnamaga, the entire focus is how comfortable is the woman in this relationship? Because if she is not, we have done injustice. Okay. So in this, I want to ask you an important question. Mm -hmm. Suppose, uh, I mean, because these questions come up in marriage matching. Uh -huh. Okay. So suppose there is a man who has a malefic in the second. Yeah. And the woman also has, or you can take the woman doesn't have. So then uh, how do you see that affliction to the second house of the man that after getting married, his relationship with his existing family will go down or uh, the wife will not gel with the members of his existing family? Or how do you see that? 
First only with the man. of one malefic is really nothing to write home about. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let us say the second lord is joined two malefics or aspected by two malefics. The lord. Okay. Forget the house. The lord. I'm very interested in the lord because the lord is the one who finally has to pay the bills to keep the rent, the lease, right? Okay. Yeah. The lord is gone. The house is gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Think of it. If you cannot pay for for the place where you stay, then uh, then ho then you'll be thrown out, right? Oh yes, yes. Same thing goes through the signs. Now, so let's say the second lord is afflicted by two malefics. It works okay. differently for men and women. Okay. Okay. For a man, if the second lord is afflicted, they will not have sons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Slight difference. See that? Okay. They cannot continue their gotra. That means there are no kids coming in. Oh. They can marry, but maybe no kids. Ah, okay. And for women, how is for it? Women, the gotra is not even coming, so they're not marrying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Again, even two malefics we can deal with. Three malefics we have to talk. I'll show you some. I more. mean, if they're expecting or conjunct the second lord. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And this problem is even more if there's also a malefic in the second, I guess. No. Second Lord has to finally be the one who's afflicted. Oh. You know what I do when I match charts? I match to see if the same planets are in the second house or loading the second house in both partners. Okay. <laughs> For example, let's say you have Jupiter in second house. Uh huh. Let's say you have Jupiter, Venus, and Mercury in second house. Let, no, even more complicated. Jupiter, Mars, and Sun. In second okay. house, or in second house. Sun, Mars is a malefic, Jupiter is a benefic, Sun is a halfway in between. So, so um, then I look at the, your potential spouse's chart. And let's say in her chart, or you're for you it would be her chart, then I'd say, okay, let's say in her chart it was Mars, Saturn, and Rahu. Okay. Because both of you have Mars, therefore I'll no. say you match. Oh, wow. <laughs> what if she didn't have, let's say she had no Mars, no Jupiter, no Sun. I say you don't match. Forget it. Okay. Why? If there's no Gotra matching, there's no matching. How can, how will she accept your Gotra unless she has the potential for it in her chart? Okay. okay. One detail. Let's, one more detail. Let us say it was that it was, uh, let's say in her chart, it was uh, Jupiter, Mercury, and uh, Venus, right? Okay. So now in yours, it was Sun, uh, Mars, Jupiter, and hers is Jupiter, Mercury, Venus. Okay. So I found out it's Jupiter that's the same common one in both. Yes. Years, right? Let us say in your chart, Jupiter is debilitated. Oh. It won't work. Even if you match, it will not survive. Oh. Okay. okay, but let's say in her chart, let you we said we've already stapled you as having Jupiter, Mars, Sun. All right. Nah. What if in her chart it was Jupiter and Sun, and Mercury? So the okay, common then. is two planets: Jupiter and Sun. Jupiter, Sun. But Jupiter, let's say your chart is debilitated, but Sun is let's say well placed, huh. strong. So okay. that means if I strengthen the Sun, your relationship will be better. Wow, this is like magic. <laughs> The logic is pristine, though. Oh my God. I'm just matching to find the same planet, see how that planet is. Because if you're going to be together because of the planet, that planet must be nice. Yeah, so in this, I want to ask you one thing. So this is for the Gotra thing you are saying. Gotra is really important because it keeps families together. Okay. Yeah, but what That's about the earlier parts that we saw regarding Venus and uh, that? We will do that. There's a big difference in both of these. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. Because let us say second house is not allowing a relationship, but Venus is. Okay. So that what happens is for a woman, they have met the guy, they're dating for a long time, but marriage is not happening. Okay. Okay. Or for a man, they married, but no kids are happening. Okay. But if Venus blocks, okay, they won't even be loved. Okay. So this is the next step you are saying. Let's try it. This is a chart of the King Otto of Bavaria. I've okay. given his birth details here, 27th April, 1848. I was struck by the story that he has. He has an okay. interesting story. 
so uh, he was supposed to he became king he became king okay. uh, back in the day when bavaria was a separate part of yeah. germany and uh, his atma karaka the atma karaka ak if you heard of chara karakas if you've heard of them then atma karaka yes. is the one who is the giver of kingship all right okay so I'm, I, in my software, I, these abbreviations can be placed next to the plans. Like AK is Atma Karaka and it's Saturn here in the 8th house. Okay? okay. So yes. if he used to become king, something in the 8th house must happen, right? So maybe he'll be sick, right? Okay. Ill, 8th house, very standard principle, right? Yes. Okay. So he became king and he was under confinement because of um, his, uh, his mental affliction. Okay. He was sick. He was literally in mental asylum, asylum when he was coronated king. Oh. So he was ruling from the mental asylum. Oh. Nobody okay. thought to consider him in, in incapable. All right? Okay. Okay. Yes. But they didn't allow him to enforce any power. He was like a puppet in that sense. Oh. But he was coronated king. Okay? Now, watch this. So, some small Jyotish principles. If you have planets in these Dushtanas, they start competing against each other. Okay? Okay. Particularly, um, you will notice that 6th and 8th, it makes sense they might compete. But 8th okay. and 12th and 6th and 6th and 12th will also compete. And then it depends on who's the stronger. So oh. here, Saturn is here alone, and there are two planets in 12th house. So they're okay. actually, so Jupiter and Mars are fighting Saturn here. Mm -hmm. So they're two against one. Mm -hmm. So who will win? These two will of course win, right? Yes. So that's right. They were winning. Now problem, Saturn is still on sign. So he won't let go so easily. Oh, okay. Let go. Despite me, this is like somebody who is being beaten into submission. All right? Oh. But they're not agreeing to loss. Okay. So he was kept under severe confinement. Bondage. This is bondage. All right? Oh. Now, treat Venus as Lagna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now the fun starts. Okay? <laughs> I have to see if he's going to get married. Okay? Okay. So I will first see the ninth house. Okay. Ninth house Mars joined Jupiter. This seems okay, but it's on the twelfth house. Maybe he's in hospital or something like that. All right? I don't know. Something okay. Like the twelfth house from Venus is having that bondage Saturn. Oh. So when can he... Meet his spouse only if he is in hospital. Oh my God! Okay. Otherwise, Perfect. try to look at his second house. Second house is second Lord Sun exalted. Wow. You'd have said, "Oh, marriage, kids, everything will happen." It cannot even happen because he doesn't even meet the woman that he's supposed to be with, right? Because the twelfth house from Venus has said, "Forget it." In wow. fact. When he was courted by his beloved was when they both were separated by walls or doors because he was supposed to be restricted in the mental asylum and she was writing letters to him. My God. That's the only time. How do you have babies under such circumstances? They didn't. Twelfth from Venus is blocked. Okay. okay? So... That's Venus for you. It has completely stopped everything. Okay. Otherwise, you say the spouse and the, during that hospital thing you said. No spouse. Courting. Okay. Girlfriend, okay. but no spouse. Okay. Oh. It's the only love he got. Otherwise, Moon in Seventh, he would be a philandra. All right? Oh. So that's the thing. What you want that is not important. It's what Venus wants first. Uh, oh. now, imagine this, somebody looks at this chart and says, oh, look, Venus is exalted, marriage guaranteed, okay? At 30, he's in the mental asylum and, his, and, a, and a woman is courting him and she doesn't marry, he doesn't marry, nothing happens, okay? All because 12th from Venus has this one problem. Now, Saturn by an own sign is not actually the problem here. Okay. I wanted to show this chart first because before I show the easy charts, because this is a hard one, and it, it ha and it's only the case really because in this chart mm -hmm. there is the competition going on between the eighth house and the twelfth house, and the eighth house is lost. Let's say one more planet was joined Saturn, they would have won over the twelfth house. 
Okay, so then what would you say that he would stay in the asylum and find somebody and get yes. married? Then he would get married. Actually, in fact, he would even get out of the asylum because the twelfth house is the asylum. Oh, okay. Yes. In fact, they were suspecting that the doctor deliberately was keeping him in the asylum and, and over medicating him. See that twelfth house doctor? Oh. The problem is the asylum, not the disease. Ah, okay. Yeah. So here, eighth house is not the problem; it's the twelfth house because it's the real problem is the twelfth house blocking the eighth house, and because the planet in the eighth is responsible for his relationships, twelfth from Venus. Oh, so therefore, okay. the problem starts. Fantastic! <laughs> it's like everything is falling into place, little by little. Yes. Okay. And now, what is exalted oh, Venus? How would you? Uh, I mean, because you said if somebody sees there's an exalted Venus, so how would you? Uh, what weight would you give to this? See, Venus. Yes, the, the where the Venus is. Uh, actually, I'm going to say this in a minute. So let me leave, leave it for then. Okay? okay. It's going to come up. I, okay. I look on it out of that. Then I'll repeat this example. Okay. Okay. Yes, but obviously you could see Venus exalted itself is not enough, right? Yes. Yeah. This was his beloved, the love story, right? Okay. Now, where's Venus gone? 12th house. We say Venus in 12th house is a very nice placement. Okay. Okay. From Lagna. From Lagna, Venus in 12th is very nice. We say that in the Dushtanas, the benefics are well placed as follows. Jupiter in the sixth makes you sin free. Okay. Mercury in the eighth makes you debt free. No debts. No loans. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Venus in the 12th house gives complete comfort and happiness in relationships. Okay. The real term here is you are very comfortable. Okay. Not be in relationships. <laughs> nice beds. Okay. 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 Yeah. Got it. Pleasure is there. Okay. Now, oh. but we know a bit more than that, don't we? All right. We know that we have to see the ninth and twelfth from Venus first. Yes, yes. Ninth from Venus is empty. The Lord is the sun. Sun is Atmakark, exalted. Sorry, debilitated. My mistake. Okay. Debilitated. But in Digbala, but debilitated, but in Digbala, but debilitated. So we can debate how is that going to work. All right? Okay. So that's like saying that the person has a predisposition which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, nine from Venus is all about what did your father teach you? What should you look for in relationships? So you see here, the oh. previous chart, what we did, we have the, uh, the ninth Lord from Venus was either Mars or Ketu. Oh. Mars yes. is in the Jupiter. Ketu is over here with Venus. So the pa father must have taught some good things. Okay? Oh, okay? These are nice principles. Jupiter, Guru Mangala, very dharmic. All right? Ketu Shukra, very spiritual. Okay? Oh. Austere, must be austere in relationships. Now see this chart. The sun is the one. Sun is in Digbala, but debilitated. Digbala means they, they must have some good profession. You know, dad says yeah. that you must be honorable, good profession. Debilitated means you have low expectations. You might not find him. Okay? Oh. Yeah, this is just expectations. Let's see what happens finally. Twelfth from Venus. Mars in own sign. Hello? Again, a planet in own sign, right? We should say this is oh. good, right? Okay. Remember with Mars, be careful. If Rahu aspects, it is Stambana. Oh, okay. Rahu is in trines, fifth aspect on Mars. Mars has become frozen in the chart. Frozen. Stambana means to freeze. You're like frozen, like oh, stone, okay. statue. Okay? So this will always happen if Rahu aspects Mars, either ways. Only if it aspects Mars. Okay? It can also be when Mars is in Aquarius. All right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my Upadesha, if you have in your chart Mars afflicted by Rahu, okay, mm -hmm. consider that maybe you're having a health problem because you're lactose intolerant. Okay. Small thing. If you're having some health problems which are difficult to figure out, consider mm -hmm. stopping milk for some time. Or at least if you're having milk, let's say some people have milk for breakfast because they mix it in, you know, cornflakes, muesli, things like that. Yes. All right. Stop having, uh, stop having it cold. If it must be cold, let it be ve vegetable milks, like almond milk and all that. Try that. Okay. okay. And every time you have milk, always heat it up. 
always. And then preferably not to every day, sometimes, you know, every two, three days do it. Because if you because Mars afflicted means you cannot digest the moon. Oh. And moon is milk. All right? Oh, okay. And as soon as you stop milk, you may stop many of the health complaints that you have. For example, allergies, uh, intolerances, indigestion, many things can be stopped by ensuring you remove your intolerance. They are, they're figuring out nowadays that many issues that people have are due to different types of intolerance. Like somebody may be oh. gluten intolerant and they keep eating gluten and one day it develops into another health issue. Because the okay. body every day is trying to fight one problem and doesn't have enough energy for the others. Okay. okay. So Rahu afflicting Mars, re reduce or leave milk? Yes, significantly reduce it. Like many people who have gone vegan, if they have Rahu afflicting Mars, they suddenly feel healthier because of this. Okay. Ah, okay. Now, now, this Rahu afflicting Mars is a singular affliction. So that okay. means that I'm tr that Sing sometimes these singular afflictions work. Okay. Jyotish wise, it is silly for me to say that one planet afflicting another is enough to warrant a significant problem. Okay. Normally a real curse, real problem requires two malefics. Uh -huh. Minimum. Three, wow. Okay. Two, yes, something is going on. One, ah, no big deal. Okay. Uh -huh. One problem, small problem. You need two normally, two to tango if we can use that term. Now, in this case, that singular affliction of Rahu on Mars is enough. So some singular afflictions are enough, and I explain them in a minute. Some singular ones are enough, not all. Okay. For example, that Saturn afflict Mars here, I wouldn't have said anything. I said no problem. Okay. Okay. Now, in this chart, in addition, we have something which is called the storm combination. And that is, if Saturn and Rahu are in mutual trines, the remnant trine is under the storm. Oh. So in this chart, not only is Mars frozen, he's also become blown away to bits. All right? Oh my goodness. Because Saturn and Rahu are in trines. So this is an addition. I wouldn't need Saturn to predict what I was going to see from this chart. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, all right. So we know her opportunity to enter into love is frozen. So she cannot have love, no matter her principles, right? Okay. Now, what is the problem? 11th house. Mm -hmm. 11th oh. house is the problem. Now, 11th house can mean, in this case, we see that Mars is the fourth lord in the 11th house. All right? Okay. Maybe it has something to do with siblings or a cousin. Okay, you know, like male cousin is Mars also, all right? Uh -huh. Yes, that, that Indians uh, appropriately believe, and like many Slavic cultures as well, that when you say brother or sister, it can mean also a male cousin or female cousin. Okay? Okay, yes, yes. yes. So this also applies to, the, to Jyotish, it works. In fact, okay. when, when, uh, when uh, in India, when they say uncle, it doesn't have to be actually a maternal or paternal uncle. It can also mean uh -huh. somebody who is a friend, a, a, an older friend of the family. They can call correct, correct. an uncle or woman aunt. Okay? Yes. So that applies also to Mercury in the chart, by the way, just, just for knowledge. The Vedic culture and it has really seeped through into the Indian and Hindu culture very nicely, uh -huh. so, which works for Jyotish. So if Mars is in this affliction, it can mean that it, there's something, some issue due to a brother or a cousin. Okay? Okay. What has happened to this brother or a cousin? The cousin has been frozen, right? Yes. Okay? So the person she was in love with, King Otto, was her cousin. Oh, my God. Okay? Yeah. So, and he is having a problem. So he's suffering. So the cousin is suffering, right? Oh, okay. Didn't we say that if we can read the seventh Lord's placement from the seventh house, we'll know if the spouse is available? So seventh oh. Lord is in second house. That's eighth from seventh. Oh, okay. That's... Yeah. So like that, we are getting this initial view into the chart, all right? Now, this is useful mm -hmm. um, because we get to know, can marriage happen or not? Now, uh -huh. in the next slides, I think I'm going to speak of these Stambana combinations. Okay. Frozen grass. 
because I 